All right, so the next step of getting this power head off of here is actually gonna be to disconnect the motor from the boat. So um, it sounds obvious, but you have you know, all these wires and cables and hoses going in the motor. And so the goal is to figure out which ones we need to remove and then allow the whole upper power head to come free with the crane. Um, a lot of this stuff we can actually take off after the motor has been removed. Um, but for now, we want to make sure that we're disconnecting everything that is attached to the power head, um, which actually is a little bit simpler than uh, than we thought. So. Anyway, um, we are going to start the disconnecting process uh, right now. First thing we're gonna do is actually take apart the throttle cable and the shift cable. Um, so those guys are just connected here on the right side of the motor. So we're just gonna disconnect this and down here. And both of those are gonna free up the throttle cables. Um, and that is part of disconnecting the motor. And then after that, we're gonna need to start disconnecting the power. Um, I would suggest at this point, my, my boat actually has a switch on it, which I will flip right now. But before obviously you touch any electrical stuff, you wanna make sure that you disconnect power. Um, so if you have a main battery kill switch, you'll wanna flip that off, which I've just done. Um, if you don't, then you'll want to disconnect it from the battery. Uh, now, as much as you can help it, you don't wanna move these cables around. So just disconnect them and don't twist them or anything because they're already set. You don't have to go back and try to reset everything if you don't have to. Now I'm disconnecting the pin uh, that connects on the uh, shift lever. Then after you get that off, you'll lift up that cable. Then there's another pin right underneath it. You can see right here. And that pin holds the bushing in and you'll need to take that out as well. The bushing is covered in grease. Uh, you can use Ziploc bags to keep all this stuff organized. I decided that I'm gonna use envelopes. They're a little easier to write on, um, but you're gonna have to make sure you seal them up good so you don't lose your stuff. Oh, that's done. We are moving on to taking off the negative battery cable right here. Uh, that negative goes all the way back into the motor. So that's connected to the, the whole deal here. That right, guy's gonna come off. 12 millimeter bolt. Now here's what I highly recommend so you don't lose where all these things go. If you can, take that bolt back, put it back where it came from. All right, so we disconnected this battery cable. Now the next step will be to take these fuse covers off. This gray one just pops off, so that's easy. This one you need a Phillips screwdriver for. They came off and then the cover just falls off. Um, those, if you can, put them right back into those slots. All right, so there's a power cable down here that connects all this stuff. I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect that. <sighs> Looks like this. Just got a big locking ring on it. You gotta take that off and then just wiggle them apart. So that's another power piece. So we gotta disconnect the main power cable now. Take these cables apart. Battery lead just actually pulls right out of there. All I had to do was just kind of wiggle it, it came right out. So that's disconnected now. All right, I think I got most of it on this side. All right, so the manual tells you to take off the sky blue, light green, and black wire that's connected for the trim stuff. Um, but if you actually trace the wires down, and you look at where they're going, the ones that are connected to the boat actually end up being the blue and the green. So you can either disconnect them from here um, or you can disconnect them from the other side of the motor where they actually attach to the trim switch. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect them from here. They're actually color coded so you can remember exactly where they go back. Okay. So now I got the trim free. So the last thing you wanna take off, let me get the flashlight down here so you can see. Uh, that right there, I believe, is the, the shift cutoff sensor. Uh, so you want to disconnect that right here, uh, just so it's not connected to anything when you're pulling this out of the boat. It doesn't get hooked or stretched or anything, because that's actually going to stay inside the boat. And then that wire goes up towards the, the top of the motor. So anyway, that's what you're going to disconnect. And then 
should look pretty much like this. You got a lot of cables disconnected. It looks like um, we are pretty much completely detached, except for the fuel line. You'll want to detach the trim and tilt switch. Uh, the switch is built into the cowling, so that's what this is right here. Um, the other thing that we're going to disconnect, which I'm going to do last, is actually the fuel line. Um, for other obvious reasons. And you'll want to disconnect the fuel line from right here, where it inputs into the actual uh, fuel filter. Uh, make sure you have a glass or something nearby so that you can dump the fuel into. Mine's just connected with a uh, zip tie, so I'm just gonna crimp it and then pour the old gas into there. And then the other thing that you're gonna wanna disconnect is the um, connection for the oil, because the oil's gotta come in here somewhere. So the oil is the other connection. And you're gonna disconnect that from up here at the top of the oil tank. Um, and then lastly, you're going to disconnect your water lines and things like that. So, um, I'm going to do fuel and oil next. Here is the switch for the trim tab. Got that disconnected. Here's the fuel line. We're going to disconnect it from here and the oil line. We're going to disconnect from here. Then, as we walk around here, you'll notice that you have these ground cables right here. This is grounded to the motor. So you're actually going to have to disconnect that ground cable. And then the last thing that we want to disconnect is actually hidden under here, which you can barely see. And that is actually the P-valve. That's where it squirts out water, lets you know that the motor is getting, uh, getting nice cooling. So you're going to have to disconnect that as well. And then we're on to trying to get this power head out. It looks like the service manual actually wants me to remove the shift lever. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's just another pin right on the forward part of the motor. And here's the shift lever. Take that pin and slide it back into your shift lever. That way you know where it is. All right, now the fun part. There's two bolts on this forward apron here. There's one here and one on the other side. Both of those gotta get removed. Looks like those are 10 millimeter bolts. Just slides out really easy. Once you get the forward apron off, it'll expose two bolts on the rearward apron, and you can get those off. Also 10 mil. There's the forward apron. Here's the rear apron. Rear apron. And when you're looking for the last two bolts on the rear apron, you can see the light pouring through there. There's one there. And there's one underneath here as well and you're going to need a flexible extension ratchet to get back in there and you'll probably need a magnetic um, tool to get the bolt out after all right so when you're taking off the first six bolts for the power head first two are going to be under here and you have two more back here and two more on the other side in the front so that's the next step all right so we've got the six out here's the last eight you need four on this side Four on the other side. After you get all eight of those, the motor is essentially free and you'll wanna get your cherry picker out to lift it off. Okay, so we got the eight bolts out from underneath, all removed. They're super, super long ones. And that is pretty much it. The service manual says now you can take the motor off. So I'm gonna set up the crane and then we'll take the, the motor off the rest of the way. You guys have likely seen this, don't know what it's for. It's for you to hook on your, your chain to lift the motor off. So I need to probably lower it just a hair to get it off. Oakley doakley. Okay, I've got the engine on an engine stand and we need to get into the crankcase here. So we're just gonna slowly do a top-down 
approach, make sure we're labeling everything, and hopefully we'll be at the crankshaft at some point today. So thanks for checking out the channel. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, go ahead and click this free subscribe button right here. You can also check out our next video over there or our most recent uploads just above my head. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time on CO Fish Pro.